Good evening and welcome to Courts Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. Today was the third day of the Supreme Court hearing the case relating to the minority status of Aligarh Muslim University. The bench comprising CGI Chandrachud, Justices Sanjeev Khanna, Surya Kant, J.B. Pardewala, Dipankar Datta, Manoj Mishra and Satish Chandra Sharma heard the issue. The court orally remarked that the protection of a minority educational institution under Article 30 Clause 1 is not lost merely because the minority community involves others in the administration. Emphasizing the word choice used in the article, CGI said that the minorities are given a choice to either administer the institute themselves or get it done by others. Senior advocate Kapil Sibyl, appearing for the AMU Old Boys Association, said that he himself was a part of the governing body of the St. Stephen's College in Delhi, that most of the governing body members of St. Stephen's were non-minority people. He pointed out that minorities may not possess expertise in dealing with all aspects of administration and may have to involve others. The genesis and historical antecedents of an institute are the relevant tests in determining its minority status. Senior advocate Salman Khurshid explained the history of Sir Sayyid in envisioning the AMU and said that educational institutions should have maximum freedom, especially minority institutions, which should retain the distinctive characteristics and cultural ethos of the minority they represent. Lastly, senior advocate Shahadan Farasat also argued that Aligarh Muslim University is one of the main factors for creating an educated Muslim class in India and continues to nurture it. And the conclusion that it is not a minority institution would gravely damage the role played by AMU. The hearing in the matter will continue on 23rd January. Stay tuned with us. The Supreme Court today extended the interim bail granted last year to former Maharashtra Minister Nawab Malik by another six months. Malik was arrested in February last year by the Enforcement Directorate in a money laundering case linked to fugitive underworld Don Daud Ibrahim and his aides. But he was released on interim bail in August. Today, a bench of Justices Bela M. Trivedi and Pankaj Mithil was hearing an SLP filed by Malik against the order of the Bombay High Court from July 2023, which declined his request for interim bail on medical grounds. His application for extension of bail was not opposed by the ED and the same was granted. The Supreme Court has sought the response of State of West Bengal to an anticipatory bail plea of BJP legislator and Minister of State for Home Affairs Nishit Pramanik in an attempt to murder case. The BJP MP representing the Dinhata Lok Sabha constituency approached the top court after a division bench of the Calcutta High Court adjourned the hearing of his anticipatory bail petition last week without granting him relief. Senior Advocate P.S. Patwalia, appearing for Pramanik, explained his apprehension of an imminent arrest pointing to an arrest warrant issued by a magistrate in March last year at the time of taking cognizance. He argued that the political situation in the state of West Bengal was volatile, citing in particular Pramanik's move to the Bharatiya Janata Party from Trinamool Congress. Although initially inclined to defer the proceedings, the bench of Justices Bela M. Trivedi and Pankaj Mithal today issued notice and agreed to hear the matter tomorrow. In a case where the Guwahati High Court had imposed a cost of 20,000 rupees on an advocate for his attempt to mislead the court, the Supreme Court has now requested the High Court to reconsider the same after the advocate tenders an unconditional apology. The case involves a situation where the petitioners were part of a pending lawsuit in the trial court. They faced a penalty due to a 22-day delay in submitting their written statement. Dissatisfied with this decision, the petitioners appealed to the High Court. During the argument, the counsel mistakenly referred to the time limit for filing a written statement as 120 days instead of the correct 90 days stipulated by CPC. For commercial suits, the time limit is extended to 120 days. The High Court, expressing dissatisfaction with this submission, dismissed the application and imposed a cost of 20,000 rupees for making an attempt to mislead the court. 
The Supreme Court bench comprising CJI Chandrachud and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra appreciated the concern of the High Court by stating that an advocate who appears before the court is first and foremost an officer of the court and is expected to discharge duties in that capacity. While the court noted that being a junior at the bar is not an immunity, it expressed its confidence that the High Court will take a sympathetic view by passing an appropriate order. In another update, the Calcutta High Court today dismissed a PIL challenging attacks on members of the Enforcement Directorate who had gone to conduct raids in West Bengal's Sandesh Khali and Bongao. The PIL stated that ED was attacked when they were on an official raid to investigate 18 places across West Bengal connected to the Russian scam allegedly involving 660 crore rupees. It was submitted that this was an act of waging war against a government agency, which was a scheduled offence under the NIA Act. A division bench of Chief Justice T.S. Sivangnanam and Justice Hiranamai Bhattacharya questioned the bona fide research of the petitioner being based solely upon newspaper reports. Accordingly, in not finding the research proper, the court dismissed the PIL. The Delhi High Court has observed that a student is entitled to full marks where the examiner fails to award marks in the margin against a particular answer even after entering a tick mark, thereby indicating that the answer is correct. The court made the observations while awarding full marks to a girl against the answer provided by her to a question in class 12th board examinations geography paper held in March last year. It was her case that the examiner had entered two tick marks against the answer to the question and thus she was entitled to full marks against the answer. On the other hand, CBSE contended that as the examiner did not enter any mark in the margin alongside the answer to the question, the board could not have awarded any mark against the answer. Justice C. Hari Shankar said that consequence of the lapse of the examiner, if any, cannot be visited on the student. The court said that even if there is an error at the end of the examiner, so long as the answer sheet does not reflect the examiner's view as being that the answer is incorrect, the student has to be given the benefit of doubt. Accordingly, it directed CBSE to issue a corrected mark sheet to the girl by adding five marks against the answer provided to the question. And lastly, the District Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission Rivari in Haryana has ordered the Rivari Gas Service Agency and ICICI Lombard House to compensate the complainant in this case who encountered a cylinder blast incident leading to a severe damage of his house. The complainant, a consumer of Rivari Gas Service, had an Indian gas cylinder provided by Indian Oil Corporation Limited, that is IOCL. The cylinder exploded on the day while he was preparing tea, causing a fire that damaged his house and belongings worth 1 lakh rupees. The entire room suffered cracks resulting in a total loss of 2 lakhs. Despite assurances, he did not receive compensation from IOCL. So he filed a consumer complaint. The gas agency argued that it wasn't liable as it delivered a sealed cylinder to the complainant and wasn't responsible for its use. IOCL denied liability referring to a distributorship agreement with the gas agency which required the distributor to indemnify IOCL for consumer losses. The insurance company argued that the complainant did not submit the required documents such as gas passbook, refill details, property ownership documents, etc. The District Commission observed that according to the agreement between Rivari Gas Service Agency and the manufacturer IOCL LPG, the gas agency had the responsibility of covering costs associated with transportation and storage. Additionally, the gas agency was obligated to indemnify IOCL against any loss or damage resulting from the storage, handling or transportation of gas cylinders. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.